When we're working with atoms, we find that they tend to all be roughly the same scale, between 10 to the minus 10 and five times 10 to the minus 10 meters in diameter. Since we're always working in the same scale, it's convenient to define a unit which operates in that scale, and that unit is the angstrom. It's written as an A with this circle accenting it, and an angstrom is equal to 10 to the minus 10 meters. This is not an SI unit, however, it's still commonly employed in the sciences. Well, let's say that we have a dime. Dime is about 17.9 millimeters in diameter. You may not know this, but dimes used to be made out of pure silver. Now, if we were trying to calculate how many silver atoms spanned the width of the dime, a silver atom is 2.88 angstroms in diameter. And so now how many of those can we place side by side to stretch from one side of the dime to the other? Well, since we are using our units here to solve the problem, we probably want to employ the factor label method. So the factor label method, remember we start by writing down our known quantity. So that's 17.9 millimeters. That's the number that could change if we add a nickel or a penny. This quantity here, this is the width per atom. So this would never change. So that's not our, our starting quantity. That's one of our ratios. And then after we write the starting quantity, we set it up so that we can multiply it by some factors and it's equal to what we want, which is silver atoms. The question asks how many silver atoms? All right, so now to solve the problem, we just need to start writing down factors to make this millimeters go away. And hopefully at some point, silver atoms pop out. All right, so first factor, um, get rid of millimeters. So let's convert millimeters into say meters. A dime is 17.9 millimeters in diameter. You might not notice, but dimes used to be made out of pure silver. So let's say that we want to figure out how many silver atoms span the width of the dime. Well, a silver atom is 2.8 angstroms in diameter. And so now let's figure out how many we, have to, we can place side by side to get across our dime. Since we're dealing with units here, we probably want to set this up using the factor label method. And remember the factor label method, we start by writing down our quantity and then we write down some space to multiply it by some factors and we write what we're trying to get it to. So in this case, our quantity is 17.9 millimeters. That's the number that could vary if we had a nickel or a quarter or something else. This number here, this is 2.88 angstroms per silver atom. So that's a ratio. This is never going to change. Now the silver atoms, the question asks how many silver atoms? So that's our unit. Now we just got to fill in the in-between. Let's start by getting rid of millimeters. We know we need to do that. We need to put millimeters in the bottom. And let's go ahead and convert that into meters. All right, well, we know that there are 10 to the minus three meters in a millimeter because that's what this M means in the SI system. It stands for 10 to the minus three. So that will take care of millimeters. Now let's go ahead and convert meters. Remember, we just learned a new conversion factor, conversion factor between meters and angstroms. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So for every one angstrom, we had 10 to the minus 10 meters. Taking care of meters, 
Now we need to get rid of angstroms. Well, if I look at my problem, fortunately I see a ratio involving angstroms. So let's try using that. 2.88 angstroms. I write the angstroms on the bottom so it cancels out. And that's for every one silver atom. And it looks like I've done this successfully. We get rid of angstroms. Now we've gotten for millimeters in the silver atoms. So just have to multiply 17.9 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 10 to the minus 10 times 1 divided by 2.88. And when I do that, I come up with 6.22 times 10 to the 7. So 62 million silver atoms, quite a few of them going across. Well, we have 62 million silver atoms just in a single file line across something very small like a dime. And what starts happening when we talk about much larger objects, instead of just trying to get their diameter, we want to you know, figure out all the atoms that fit in their volume. Well, in our laboratory scale, we have so many atoms that really we have a, a continuum. We can't pick out individual atoms with our tweezers. We, we deal with the substance itself. Now our microscopic scale though, so this is probably where we're being theoretical and we're trying to analyze the problem in terms of what we know about atoms. So that's very good for analysis, but then how do we get to the practical side where we're, our numbers that we have from our knowledge of atoms are actually going to apply? Well, the answer to get between one and the other is actually fairly simple. We just need a conversion factor. So we need a very large multiplier. And so if we take our very small numbers and we multiply them by a very large number, we'll get an ordinary number as the product. Now this very large number, the quantity is called a mole. It's defined as 6.022 times 10 to the 23 quantity of something and that something can be anything. So this is similar to having a dozen or a million. You can have a dozen rabbits, a dozen monkeys, a dozen um, anything. You can have a million dollars. You can have uh, a million rocks, anything. It's just a quantity of something. So similar for our mole. It's just a number that's convenient to count in. Because it's such a large number, then when we're dealing with a very large number of atoms, we get more ordinary numbers in return. So for instance, if we had two moles of rabbits, so each mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So that means our rabbits here, we have a quantity of 12.044 times 10 to the 23 rabbits, just twice this number. Some very phyloprogenitive rabbits. Now, there's a number that goes along with this called Avogadro's number. And it looks very similar. It's 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And in this case, we put some units on it. We put units of inverse moles. So moles goes in the bottom. Another way of writing moles in the bottom is to write mole to the minus one. So sometimes you will see that notation. And then up top can be any quantity that we please, since we said we can use these numbers to refer to any kind of thing. So to see why we need this number, let's say that we wanted to, to go with the reverse of our process here. Here, we took two moles, so we took twice this quantity to figure out our number of rabbits. Now what if we wanted to get back the other direction? So we're starting out with 12.044 times 10 to the 23 rabbits. Well, now what I'm going to do, since I want to get into moles, I'm going to use this ratio, but I'm going to flip it so moles is on top. So I put one mole on top, 
and I put the 6.022 times 10 to the 23 quantity on the bottom. And this is the quantity, we're counting rabbits. So we have a mole of rabbits to this many rabbits. And now if we treat this dimensionally, we can think of these rabbits here as canceling. And so now we get into moles of rabbits. Small note, it's common to write moles just using three characters instead of four characters because obviously four is far too much work. Now for our example, let's figure out how many iron atoms are contained in a 10 kilogram dumbbell. Uh, we're just going to assume that we have pure iron here and some information, which we're gonna see how to look up later. A mole of iron atoms weighs 55.8 grams per mole. All right, so how are we gonna solve this problem? Well, we're gonna find that there's some consistency to how we solve problems in chemistry. We're gonna stick with the tried and true factor label method. It starts by writing down our quantity. So that's the 10 kilograms. And the problem is asking us to figure out how many iron atoms. So that's the desired units that we're looking for. Now we're just gonna go through our process. You need to make kilograms go away. My recommendation to make kilograms go away is that we're gonna go ahead and convert it into grams here. We have 1,000 grams in a kilogram because that's what this K means. It means 10 to the third power multiplied by 1,000. So now we are in grams. Well, we have a ratio up here involving grams. So we can use that to make grams go away. So it's, we need to put grams on the bottom that's for every one mole. Now we have to get rid of moles, and this is where Avogadro's constant comes in and saves the day. So Avogadro's constant it was 6.022 times 10 to the 23 inverse moles. So we can just stick those on the bottom. And remember, the quantity here is whatever we're counting. So in this case, it is going to be iron atoms. Because these were moles of iron here, which means that these are moles of iron here. So this must be quantity of iron to moles of iron. We can go ahead and multiply this all out and I get 1.07 times 10 to the 26. This is a pretty big number. This is on order of about 100 times the number of stars known to exist in the universe. That's how many iron atoms there are in just that, that small weight. So that's why we need this huge conversion factor here. So we're dealing with such immense quantities on this scale.